Hey, hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Tech Tiger Academy. I'm Ravi Malhotra, your instructor. Uh, we are doing a series, Learn Cybersecurity with Ravi Malhotra. Uh, this one is exclusively only for Radware ADC. ADC means Application Delivery Controller. Uh, we are going to uh, learn App Director 1008 product, okay? And this is lecture number four. So far, we have been through three lectures on this uh, App Director. Um, lecture one, two, three. These are the links you can find of my videos. There are other videos as well on my YouTube channel for different technologies. Uh, for checkpoint uh, NGX R80.40 CCSA, as well as you know 40 gate uh, firewall version uh, 6.4.3. Okay, uh, this is uh, for the course. Uh, uh, this is for the course NSE4. Okay, so this is for the course. NSC 4 all right so <clears throat> these are some of those prerequisites which are important for any candidate uh, to continue learning in radware that includes you know all these concepts you know knowledge in different protocols knowledge in OSI layers knowledge in load balancing concepts knowledge in persistency cookies encryption decryption compression and caching uh, if you really want to refresh yourself, right, I would I would suggest you guys to go through lecture number two of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, video series. Lecture number two is all about components understanding. All right. Now, so uh, this slide talks about two things basically one is called the modules another is called acceleration engines we have already been through these modules in our uh, in our in our chapter number three in our you know lecture number three we discussed about application smart service module we discussed about advanced health monitoring module uh, traffic redirection module plus global traffic redirection as well we discussed that in lecture number three global traffic redirection in case if you have a site with multi-region uh, presence right we discussed about bandwidth management as well and we discussed about the advanced security module these are the modules uh, which are present in radware app director right each of these modules have a have their exclusive functionality uh, sometimes right two modules work together to achieve a purpose you know take an example uh, advanced health monitoring tool as well as traffic redirection tool they actually work together health monitoring module is the base of all modules because it actually checks the health check of a backend server it can provide you health checks from layer 2 up to layer 7 okay health checks it has some predefined health checks and you can also create your own health checks as well <coughs> so that's that's all knowledge right you can you can grab in chapter number three uh, now let us talk about acceleration engines they are the these are the fresh two topics that we need to discuss in this lecture number four and there are basically two types of uh, acceleration schemes available okay one is called standard another is called enhanced acceleration again i'm saying there are two types of acceleration engine two types of acceleration schemes acceleration engines one is called standard other is called enhanced okay we will now go through each of these acceleration schemes one by one and we will also go through the different features and functionalities provided uh, in each of these acceleration schemes all right so <clears throat> another one is that you know uh, enhanced uh, so then so now let us talk about uh, the standard acceleration so standard acceleration uh, which is a scheme which is engine is basically responsible for all of these features you know anything related to bandwidth management anything related to behavioral dos anything related to transparent server support backend encryption port diameter and ldap load balancing application server tcp splitting uh, that includes splitting table as well as splitting statistics 
event scheduler and application security all these functionalities come under standard acceleration path so bandwidth behavioral dos uh, application security tcp splitting load balancing for diameter and backend servers and then transparent server support okay these are some of the very common features which come under standard acceleration we will now talk about each of them in in a little bit more details now <clears throat> So this is about standard acceleration. This is for the bandwidth management. Okay, so bandwidth management, as we just saw, is one of the is the very first uh, feature in acceleration, standard acceleration. So bandwidth management in general is a simple concept: uh, differentiate or classify user traffic according to wide variety of criteria, and then assign various priorities to each classified packet or session. Sometimes um, you have different types of users in your organization. You would like to give a good amount of bandwidth to the VIP users, right? Of course, that happens in every organization. This is how you split bandwidth between between normal users, right, and and between VIP users. Sometimes uh, uh, there is a development team, right, and you would like to give them unrestricted internet, and you would like to give them the best bandwidth you have to developer guys, okay. So this is how we differentiate or classify user traffic, okay? According to their roles, according to their functions, according to the need. I'm sharing example giving HTTP traffic higher priority than SMTP traffic, giving SMTP traffic little higher priority than FTP, okay? You can configure the bandwidth for your platform according to your needs by using Radware's quality of service tool. I hope I was clear in this uh, small presentation. We achieve bandwidth management to prioritize, to classify user traffic as per their roles. And how we do it? We do it using Radware's quality of service tool. Okay. This is the standard acceleration. This is behavioral DOS and uh, load. This is uh, LDAP diameter, LDAP load balancing. <coughs> behavioral DOS, you know, DOS is a common thing now okay it used to happen quite occasionally but uh, it's a time when we hear a lot about dos you know different types of dos attacks are there layer 4 dos attacks you know layer 7 dos attacks there volumetric dos attacks are there so behavioral dos tuning parameters lets you set the maximum number of behavioral DOS policies. Okay, this is how we do it. So in a behavioral DOS and standard acceleration, what we do, we actually set the maximum number of behavioral DOS policies. If if I ask you a question, right, where do you set policies for behavioral DOS? The answer will be in a standard acceleration path. The default number of policies for behavioral DOS is 10. Okay, you want to configure more, you may must reset the number of policies allowed and but the only thing is that you need to check for the available memory as well as the health of your box before you configure additional policies okay uh, that's important guys diameter and ldap load balancing radware app director enables the management and load distribution of ldap related messages this is uh, this is specific to authentication originating from a single tcp connection across multiple ldap servers okay this is all function of standard acceleration very important feature of standard acceleration is tcp splitting it actually helps a lot in throughput as well tcp splitting is the ability to maintain open concurrent connections opposite all servers providing diameter or ldap while a single connection was opened by the client you know so one connection is there but this one connection let's say that one connection is there and this is split this is tear down okay this is the tcp splitting it is important to improve tcp throughput due to the many applications that use tcp because because in udp we cannot use the splitting in tcp we can use the splitting so any application which runs on top of tcp 
uh, uh, you know make an ad advantage of TCP splitting and hence we can improve the throughput I uh, in the very beginning I said that TCP splitting is useful to increase the throughput okay performance characteristics of TCP is that the rate at which its window size increases is inversely proportional to the average round trip time okay now it's a it's a kind of little um, little complex to understand so there is a there is a sender window there is a receiver window every window has a sizing specific to and then there is a path okay so traffic which can which starts from here and it, it it comes back as a reply is called the round trip time okay so <clears throat> you you really need to ensure that you know in order to configure tcp splitting you need to play around with the window sizing and then you also need to consider the round trip time as well you know because these two things are proportional to each other so thus reducing the round trip time between connection endpoints can increase the window size better but the problem is that how can you reduce the round trip time between connections you know because the moment you reduce the round trip time between connections what will happen you will increase the window size faster right this is something little more advanced you will have to tune to either wikipedia or maybe you know a generic guide to TCP to understand functionalities of uh, how do you play around windows how do you make changes in registry what is the round trip time concept what is the concept of uh, pops in between round trip time and all that <coughs> so an intuitive way to reduce the effective round trip time of a direct TCP connection between any two hosts is to split that connection into multiple pipeline subconnections so that each subconnection has a lower round trip time than the direct connection okay as we just said that instead of sending this entire big packet we will split it and we will send each of these connections each of these splitted packets will have their own round trip time will have their own uh, window sizing and thus overall you will see the improvement in the round trip time and that of course will give you the better throughput in addition to increasing throughput you know tcp splitting can also route around failures and discover paths that are better than the you know direct path if there is a if there is a, this is the path right take an example there is another path as well which only has two hops right so this can this this is also which is discoverable using tcp splitting this not only improves the connection throughput but also improves the reliability and quality of paths between endpoints so this is all function of tcp splitting the another feature in standard acceleration is an application security applic standard acceleration application security you can call it as waf which is web application firewall and the protection that you get inside application security is signature protection behavioral dos protection connection limit protection security reporting protection attack database protection update policies and packet anomalies okay all these are the protections that you get inside an application security module okay application security is a module remember that <coughs> now let us discuss about enhanced acceleration now as is because uh, let me go back these were the features in the standard acceleration similarly enhanced acceleration also has a pack of uh, of some features right and these features are let me tell you that in enhanced acceleration uh, is far more busy than standard acceleration because a lot of the things that you will see are happening you know um, in, in enhanced acceleration acceleration engine is the most important thing SSL offloading trust service list tcp optimization web compression web caching tps licensing upgrade tls license and compression through licenses all these things come under enhanced acceleration path acceleration engine so app director acceleration engine 
it actually reduces web application latency across the WAN. It decreases application response time. It offloads servers from, hand, from handling SSL decryption and encryption. It reduces chattiness of TCP and HTTP protocols. It improves response time by offloading TCP connection handling. It accelerates repetitive content fetching time by using a cache. And using compression, it reduces WAN bandwidth consumption and accelerate web pages on low bandwidth as well. So acceleration engine performs so many things, right? It performs um, compression, cache, TCP handling, chattiness of TCP plus HTTP, SSL offload, and server response time. So these all are functions of acceleration engine. Enhanced acceleration SSL offload. Now app director SSL offload accelerates SSL traffic and offload servers. Okay. Handles SSL key negotiation with the client and performs encryption and decryption of communications. App Director serves as a proxy and it terminates SSL client session, opening a session. So I'm a user. That's the ADC. Here is a server. Application is Tech Tiger Academy. in okay this is https now user will open a browser and he will in the address bar he will write down https tech tiger academy dot in this connection will land over here so this will do ssl offload on behalf of a server in order to do offload ADC has to perform things like encryption, decryption, and key management because every certificate has a set of public keys, right? And you and and you need to have a private key in order to respond against that. So in order to do SSL offloading, in order to do SSL key negotiation, um, you know, a lot of encryption, decryption and key stuff need to be managed by the Radware ADC. <clears throat> Another feature comes into enhanced acceleration is trust service list. Now, App Director is the only ADC solution that provides full support of the T TSL standard. Automatic retrieval and update of the client authentication configuration according to the TSL standard. OSCP open server certificate um, this is something this is something related to certificate caching to minimize authentication infrastructure overload of advanced client certificates and verification capabilities for granular control over allowed certificate holders access at network level this is all a function of trust service list you know wonderful feature of an of enhanced acceleration is web compression it compresses http traffic to reduce the latency for clients that to access web applications over WAN. It compression uh, reduces the size of object. Compressed objects takes less time to download over the WAN. Latency gets high, for instance, when clients are located a large number of network hops away from servers, over satellite links, or when bandwidth is low. So these three are the reasons. Even if the network hops away from servers, that's the reason number one. If he is connecting over satellite links, reason number two, and when bandwidth is low, these are the reason number three. These are the reasons when latency gets high, for instance, right? In order to in order to neutralize all that, right? Compression can really help you because compression will reduce the size of an object. Once the size of an object will be reduced, it actually needs less bandwidth to travel and to get processed. Supports compression in software by default. 
An optional hardware compression module enables app director to handle high throughput from the web application servers as well. So that's that's a choice, right? Uh, compression is available to you as a software feature in app director, but if you want, you can also procure hardware appliances as well for for large amount of compression. <clears throat> web caching and TCP optimization. Now caching is another area, right? This is how you improve the performance. App Director improves response time by caching web objects from servers and offload them to save resources. Okay, this is the golden line. App Director caches server content according to their cache settings as they appear in the HTTP headers. Important, very important, right? TCP optimization. App Director reorders TCP packets that arrive out of order, reordering and this offload this task from backend servers. Otherwise, this task has to be performed by the backend server. But this is what App Director does on behalf of a server, so it actually improves uh, performance. And then TPS licensing. App Director comes bundled with basic SSL capabilities, uh, with maximum number of transactions per second. If you remember lecture number one, we discussed about uh, on-demand switch VL, VL-XL on demand switch 3 hyphen on demand switch 3 hyphen excel series each of these models comes with very predefined ssl connections per second capabilities now this capability can be upgraded by a license as well and these are called tps license transactions per second okay this ssl tps license upgrade does not require the rebooting <clears throat> this is this is just the differentiator between enhanced versus standard this is standard this is enhanced acceleration engine come over here this is regular app director functionalities plus ssl policies compression policies caching policies client authentication policies tsl authentication policies tcp optimization acceleration logging acceleration performance statistics and standard ability to work with app Excel in uh, transparent mode plus you know transparent server support delayed binding backend encryption port tcp splitting these all are functions of the standard acceleration engine i believe that's the last slide of this lecture guys so that's all uh, in this lecture we have learned the very basic difference between two critical components uh, standard versus enhanced acceleration they are very important to understand and uh, that's all guys um, that's 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 the end of lecture number four i am really running short of subscribers so i will request all of you just to subscribe to my youtube channel so that you get notification of all upcoming videos uh, i need your support guys uh, so just please uh, leave some comments like the video uh, that's all guys i wish you best of luck for your learning uh, stay safe and connected. Have a wonderful day, guys. Goodbye.